SCP The Board Game has an expansion now. It is SCP The Board Game Weapons and Armor expansion. A link to buy it will be in the description. Welcome to this tutorial on how to play my game SCP The Board Game. This is the third edition rule set which is used in the expansion and the current version of the game. When opening the box, you should find 20 boards, um, components such as punch-outs, um, pawns, dice, etc., roll cards, and key cards. For now, we can dump the components into the box. Collect the eight pawns and six-sided die from the box. Sort the punch-outs in the box into three different groups. The direction punch-outs, the death punch-outs, and the number punch-outs. Depending on the amount of roll cards in the game, you will put down different rolls into a pile. In the example I have here, this is a six-player game with two SCPs, one NTF, one Chaos Insurgency, one Scientist, and one D-Class. You can put aside the unused roll cards and pawns, as they will not be used in the game. There is a detailed description in the rulebook on how many roll cards to use, depending on how many players are in your game. Also included in the same table is the amount of key cards that will be available in the key card pool during the game, depending on how many players you have. In a six player game, you should have four level ones, four level twos, four level threes, two level fours, and one level five. Now shuffle the roll cards and deal them out to each player randomly. Give out the corresponding pawn to each player's roll. The pawn should match the roll color that player is. Then give out key cards depending on the roll. A nine-tailed fox should start with a level four key card. A scientist should start with a level three. Two key card and a chaos insurgency should start with a level three key card. The SCPs start on room number twenty. The nine-tailed fox starts on room number one. The chaos insurgency start on room number five. The D class starts on room number eleven. The scientist starts on room number seventeen. In order to determine the SCP. Each SCP player plays as they will roll the six-sided die. Refer to the rule book for which SCP corresponds to which die roll. In this case, the SCP rolled a 1. That means they are playing as SCP-173. I will touch on later in this video how each SCP works, and what special abilities they have. If SCP-173 or SCP-096 are in the game, players should be given a direction punch-out that matches the color of their pawn. If SCP-096 is in the game, they should be given a direction punch-out as well. SCPs do not need a direction punch-out while playing as SCPs, but they may need one later if they respawn. The exception to this is SCP-096. Player with the lowest health, usually the D-Class, goes first. On your turn, the first thing you can do is an optional movement action. After your movement action, if possible, you can do any other action. You may only do one type of action once per turn. On a movement action, you first roll the die and then move up to the amount of spaces rolled in any direction. 
if you're playing with the direction punch out, point the direction punch out in the direction that you last moved. For example, if you moved to the left, left last, then you point the direction punch out left. If you moved down last, then you point the direction punch out down. SCPs, unless their abilities modify their movement action, may add one to each movement roll. For example, if an SCP rolls a six, they may move seven spaces. All scientists have a plus one on all movement rolls. As long as the scientist is alive or has escaped, then the all nine-tailed fox will have an advantage on all movement rolls. They are allowed to roll twice and take the highest roll. After your movement action, if you are at most two spaces away from a player on an opposing team, you may attack that player. First, roll the potential attack damage. Then, the player who is being attacked will refer to their defense threshold located on their roll card. They must roll a number greater than or equal to their defense threshold in order to defend. If they do, they will take no damage. If they do not, they will take the amount of damage rolled by the attacker, If and their defense threshold will increase by 1. SCPs, unless their abilities modify their attack action, have a plus 2 on all potential damage rolls. All NTFs have a plus 2 attack damage against all SCPs. All Chaos Insurgency have a plus 2 attack damage against all NTFs. If at any point during a movement action, or after a movement action, you land on a door space, a door space being any space at the edge of a hallway in a room, you will then switch rooms. First, locate the room that that door connects to. The room it connects to is indicated under the door space. Find the room in the board stack and place it next to the room that your pawn is on. Align it so that both door spaces connect to each other and then move your pawn from one door space to the next door space. This does not count as a movement space and you can continue moving the amount of movement spaces you have left if you can't still have movement spaces left. For example, if you land on a door space and you can still move two, then you can move two after you have switched rooms into the next room. After you move, if the room that you were previously in is empty, you can then put that room into the board stack. If a door space has a lock on it, you must have a lock equal to or greater than the level that lock is. In this example, the scientist only has a level 2 lock, so they may not move onto the level 3 door space, and they cannot switch rooms into the next room. If you finish movement on the SCP-914 space, you may use SCP-914. SCP-914 is able to upgrade your keycard level. Simply choose the key card you want to upgrade and roll the die. If it's a 1, the key card is discarded into the key card pool. If it's a 2, the key card is downgraded by one level. If it is downgraded at a level 1, it is discarded. If it is a 3, nothing happens. If it is a 4, the key card will increase by one level. If it is a 5, the, the key card will increase by two levels. If it is a 6, the keycard will immediately become level 5. If the keycard you are upgrading or downgrading to is not available in the keycard pool, you can use a black punch out to indicate what keycard it is changed to. During or after your movement action, if you land on a keycard pickup space, you can add one keycard from the keycard pool to your hand that matches the keycard on the keycard pickup space. 
if there is no key card of that key card type in the key card pool, then you cannot pick up a key card. If you are a nine-tailed fox player and you land on an alpha warhead space, you can activate the alpha warhead using a level five key card. If the scientist is still in the facility, then the alpha warhead cannot be activated. If the scientist died, then there will be a five round countdown before the alpha warhead explodes. If the scientist escaped, the alpha warhead will explode immediately upon activation. The nine-tailed fox wins when the alpha warhead explodes and ends the game. If the scientist lands on an alpha warhead space and loses a level two key card on the next turn, the nine-tailed fox may take two movement actions. If a player's health is ever equal to or below zero, they die. The player who most recently attacked them is considered the player who killed them. The player who killed them may then pick up a key card and add it to their hand if the player who died had a key card. If SCP-049 or SCP-035 is in the game, the player's corpse will remain on the space they died for five rounds before they can respawn. A player will leave their pawn just to the side of the space they died on. If SCP-049 or SCP-035 is not in the game, the player can respawn immediately. If killed by an SCP player, place an SCP death punch out on your roll card. If killed by a Chaos Insurgency player, place the Chaos Insurgency death punch out on your roll card. If a player was killed by the Chaos Insurgency, then they will respawn as a Chaos Insurgency on board 5 with a level 3 key card, 12 health, and 3 defense. If a player was a scientist and died, they will respawn as a Chaos Insurgency no matter what on board 5 with a level 3 key card. If a player was a D-Class and died, they will respawn as a 9-tailed fox no matter what with a level 5 key card and 15 health on board 1. If a player was not a scientist, or was not a D-class, or was killed, not killed by the Chaos Insurgency, then they may roll the die to determine their role. On a 1-3 to three roll, a player will respawn as a 9-tailed fox, they will be given a level 5 key card and their max health and the minimum defense threshold of a 9-tailed fox. They will place their pawn on the 9-tailed fox start located on board 1. On a 4-6 to six roll, a player will respawn as a Chaos Insurgency, they will be given a level 3 key card and the max health and the minimum defense threshold of a Chaos Insurgency. They will place their pawn on the Chaos Insurgency start located on board 5. When a player spawns as a 9-tailed fox, they will be given a level 5 key card. If no level 5 key card is available, they may be given a level 4 key card. For every other player that spawns as a 9-tailed fox, all 9-tailed fox will get a plus 1 bonus to their movement. When a player respawns as a Chaos Insurgency, they will be given a level 3 keycard. If no level 3 keycard is available, they may be given a level 4 keycard. If you roll a 1 when choosing your SCP, you will play as SCP-173. SCP-173 cannot make a movement action or attack action if a player's direction is pointing towards SCP-173. On the third turn, SCP-173 is still being looked at, they may make a blink action which allows them to move and attack even if being looked at. In order to be looked at, SCP-173 must be within a straight line pointing from the other player's direction. If SCP-173 is behind the player, then they are not seen. If SCP-173 moves in to the line of sight of another player, they will stop moving and end their turn. SCP-173 multiplies all movement actions by 2 and multiplies all attack actions by 4. If SCP-049 is in the game, each player who dies must wait 5 rounds before respawning. They will also respawn 
if a cure attempt is failed. As if SCP-049 finishes movement on the space that a player's corpse is on, they can attempt to cure that corpse. If they may roll the die, if it is 4 or higher, then the player is cured. They will respawn as SCP-049-2 with 11 health and 3 defense on the same spot they died and now be on the SCP team and working for the SCP objective. And if, if SCP-049 fails, the cure attempt that player will respawn immediately as normal. If SCP-049 kills a player, they will respawn immediately as SCP-049-2. If SCP-096 is in the game, players must be giving a direction punch out, including SCP-096. SCP-096 has two states, a docile and angered. In the docile state, SCP-096 has no movement bonus and cannot attack. In the angered state, SCP-096 has a times 2 to all attack actions and a times 4 to all movement actions. If SCP-096 and a player are, are in within each other's line of sight, then SCP-096 becomes angered. If that player who initially angered them dies for any reason, SCP-096 will then return to a docile state. If SCP-035 is in the game, all players must wait 5 rounds before respawning if they die. They can immediately respawn if SCP-035 uses their corpse on their turn. If SCP-035 lands on a space that a player died on, then they may take half of that player's max health. For example, if it is a scientist, half of the scientist's health is 5. If it is a chaos insurgency, half of the chaos insurgency's health is 12. If it is a D-class, half of the D-class's health is also 5. If SCP-035 dies, they can roll the die upon a 5 or a 6, they may immediately respawn and the player who killed them will then immediately die. SCP-035 will respawn with the health and defense that player had on the space that player was on. SCP-035's death will not count towards any objective until they are permanently dead. SCP-106 does not need keycards to pass through any locked doors. Instead of moving on SCP-106's turn, they may do two different teleport actions. The first is a new teleport action. SCP-106 will look on the door spaces to see which rooms connect to the room they are currently in. SCP-106 then may teleport to the center of any room connecting to the room they are currently in and then they will write down the room they were in, if not already written down, and then the new room that they teleported to. With an existing teleport action, SCP-106 may teleport to the center of any room written down. SCP-079 cannot be played in a game with only one SCP. If there is only SCP and SCP-1079 is rolled, that SCP there must re-roll to choose a different SCP. SCP-079 starts with one health and no way to defend itself. Upon taking any attack damage, they will instantly die. SCP-079 cannot move from the SCP starting square in room number 20 and will remain there for the entirety of the game until they die. SCP-079 has various actions they can do on their turn, such as lock doors, teleport players, brainwash players, turn off the alpha warhead, lock down certain rooms, Disable keycard pickups, 
and an electric shock, but they can only do the electric shock if the other SCP player has died. SCP-079 may do only one of these actions per turn. For more information on these actions, refer to the rulebook. The game ends when one team completes their win condition first, then that team wins. There are three teams in SCP the board game, the Nine-Tailed Fox team, the Chaos Insurgency team, and the SCP team. The Nine-Tailed Fox team wins when the Alpha Warhead explodes. The Alpha Warhead explodes immediately upon activation if the scientist escaped. The Alpha Warhead will take five rounds after activation to explode if the scientist died. The Alpha Warhead cannot be activated if the scientist is still in the building. The Alpha Warhead needs a level 5 keycard to be activated. The Chaos Insurgency win when every player either has been killed by the Chaos Insurgency or is a Chaos Insurgency, as the Chaos Insurgency cannot kill a player if they have been respawned as a Chaos Insurgency without being killed by the Chaos Insurgency. Every player that has been killed by the Chaos Insurgency will respawn as a Chaos Insurgency. If a Chaos Insurgency player dies, but has never been killed by the Chaos Insurgency before their death, then they will need to be killed if they spawn as a nine-tailed fox. The SCPs win when every non-SCP player has been killed once by the SCPs. If an SCP player dies, the other SCP player will have to kill that player in order to win. Alright, that is how to play my game, SCP the Board Game. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will happily answer them. A link to buy SCP the Board Game and the expansion for SCP the Board Game will be in the description. Thank you for watching.